All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeline CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Laura Gale, all the way from Lisbon, Portugal. How are you doing, Laura? I am very well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure it's beautiful there right now. Is it blue skies? It is. Yes, we've had a pretty spectacular summer. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, Laura's originally from Australia, but obviously uh, enjoying the Portuguese lifestyle there. Um, Laura Gale, ghostwriter. So Laura helps entrepreneurs and leaders write books to grow their businesses. So Laura, let's just start off, right? If I'm an entrepreneur, small business owner, I'm running around doing all these things. Why should I take time out to write a book? A book is a really powerful way to establish yourself as an authority in your space. It differentiates you very quickly from your competitors. It's a great way to get past all of the noise and distractions and gatekeepers that get in the way of you connecting with your ideal clients. And it's really a strong way to uh, stay top of mind as well, because once somebody has your book in their hands or in their office or on their device, you know, they see you all the time. Uh, they become deeply connected to your message. They understand how you do things and why you do things. And so when the time comes for them to take action in your industry, there's really nobody else they're going to want to choose. Right. Uh, but uh, most people would maybe say, uh, well, I, I don't know what exactly to write about, or I'm not a very good writer, or I don't really have any good ideas. So when you when somebody like that, uh, you know, contacts you and says, Laura, I'd like to do a book, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to write about. I'm not very good with this, with putting my ideas together. What do you say? I think there are a few things to unpack there. Mm -hmm. I think that just because you're not a writer by trade doesn't mean that you mm -hmm. don't have good stories everybody discounts the interest of their own experiences and the wealth of their own insights just because they're so in it all the time. You know, mm -hmm. they're completely in the weeds and hard to get perspective on what makes you interesting a lot of the time. But human beings are very interesting and entrepreneurs particularly so. And so it's just a question of filtering your experiences and your stories to create a cohesive message for a reader. And that's, that's what a professional writer is for. Um, you know, for most entrepreneurs, trying to write the book themselves is not really the best use of their time. You know, mm -hmm. they have other skill sets that they've honed over a long career. They are running their businesses and writing a book takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and energy. And, you know, most of the time you're better served having somebody else at least help you with the process, coach you through the process so that you get the most effective and efficient way of producing your book. And so how do you help them um, focus in on the right subject area? Because, yeah, I mean, I may be deep in my business and everything, but that doesn't mean everything to do with it is that interesting. Absolutely. And a big part of that is setting a strategic intent for the book, which I call the North Star. It's sort of a clear goal that we can follow all the way through the process. Having that defined early on gives us a very clear filter for whether this story or this piece of information fits in this particular book. You know, it might be great information, but it might be better in a different book or serving a different purpose in your content strategy. Mm -hmm. So that strategic intent really gives us sort of a, a clear metric for what belongs and what doesn't. I guess it's also part of um, what you do is kind of setting the expectation too, isn't it? Because, I mean, producing a business book it's not like producing you know a thriller that's going to sell millions of copies i mean it's going to have a, it's going to have its own defined audience but the success metrics are not all book sales right correct yes and most people are going with a book uh, for their business they're going to make most of their roi on the back end right so yeah. it's probably not the front end unit sales that is going to be particularly lucrative for you but if you have a high ticket item on your back end then you might only need to have a few readers to start seeing an increase a significant increase on your bottom line so i always try to ask people how many of your high ticket item would you have to sell to make this book worthwhile and if the answer is one or two then it's a no-brainer really so it, it's, a, it's a much more long-term play for a business owner. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess that's, a, that, that's part of um, obviously setting those, setting those KPIs and expectations in, in advance. 
then when you work with somebody, how do you draw out the, you know, draw out the stories or the insights? Because as you say, I mean, a lot of us kind of underrate maybe our experiences, maybe underrate the insights we have, maybe think, uh, well, they're not that worthwhile. How do you draw them out? Once we've got that strategic intent in place, we go into an outlining process. So I'm looking for the big ideas that you want to talk about, the big things that the reader needs to take away. And then we sort of start to hone down even further. So we start talking about specific stories, specific case studies, particular pieces of research and information that we'll need to put together. And then we go into interviewing. So once all of that sort of um, structural stuff in, is in place, I sort of think of it as like scaffolding or a skeleton mm -hmm. that you can build on top of. Once we've got all of that, then the interviewing is basically delving really deep into everything that we've just sort of pinned to, to the board. So the interviewing process become, is very conversational. I just ask every question that I can think of and those conversations are never linear. You know, I can come with mm -hmm. a perfect list of questions, but we'll go off on tangents, things will happen, you know, people will call or interrupt or whatever. And so there's always a an organic thread all the way through those conversations. And it means that I get a very complete picture of somebody's life. Yeah. And then, and then how do you keep them engaged during the process? Because let's face it, I mean, there's always the initial excitement to start off and then obviously life and business gets in the way. How do you keep people on track and engaged? A lot of that is also about setting expectations, I think. So uh, it's very front loaded with the interview process that all happens right at the start of the project. And then I say, okay, I'm, I'm off now for the next six to eight weeks. I'll talk to you mm -hmm. when I've got a draft done. So you're free to go about your business. <laughs> so there's no expectation that they need to be involved in that process. I come to them with a finished draft. Then I say again, okay, now I need your attention again. So I'm gonna need this much time from you for this, you know, period of time uh, so that we can do editing and get the publication process underway. Um, so it's, it's very much, I think, about helping them understand what their time commitment is going to be and what each of those phases will be so that they come sort of feeling ready for the process. And then how do you manage the, the, the process where I think most people get excited, maybe, you know, get their ideas together and then they have, then they maybe go through this imposter syndrome piece where they suddenly like towards the end, they're like, Oh, well, hang on a second. So I'm going to launch this out to the world. I'm going to portray myself as an expert, but I don't really feel like an expert. What if I get found out and all of this natural stuff that people go through before they actually put themselves out there. How do you manage somebody through that process? a very common experience and it's something uh, that I really try to talk through with people all the way through the process. You know, often in, in interviews and in conversations, things will come up and you can see that it's uncomfortable for them to talk about or, you know, they're feeling a mm -hmm. bit um, unsure about something. And, I'll, I, you know, I am very happy to leave things out if, if customers don't want to put those things in their book. It's fine. You know, it's your story. Um, but I, I think people underestimate how kind their audiences can be as well and how much value they have even if you're not the only expert in your field or you're mm -hmm. not the most advanced expert in your field you know just because somebody else has a few years more experience than you or has sold more product than you or you know whatever your kind of insecurity is is related to it doesn't discount the value of your experiences there's going to be an audience for your expertise the way you tell it and those people are not necessarily not necessarily going to resonate with the other people in your space. Mm -hmm. So I think comparing yourself to other people um, really discounts how uniquely you are able to bring your message to an audience. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a, it's a great point because I do think, I think sometimes you got to take a step out and say, okay, when I see a book by somebody else is my, is my first reaction to go, Hmm, I wonder if they're mm. really an expert. I wonder right. if they're they really qualified to write they, this. If they weren't, would they? <laughs> yeah. So that's not normally most people's natural reaction. It's like when somebody comes on stage to speak. I mean, most people in the audience are going, Oh, this is good. I hope this is interesting. They're not going, I hope this person does really badly. Right, but, of but course. you often you know, imagine they, they're that, cheering for you if you're nervous uh, you know they want you to succeed <laughs> and i mean and i always think as well as uh you know when a book if there's one or two, if you can get one or two nuggets of wisdom out of a book that's completely worthwhile absolutely yeah it can provide a, a major shortcut and the person doesn't even have to read the whole book mm. 
Yeah. So what are some of uh, what are what are some of the successes you've had? Maybe ones where people were surprised about how much a, writing a book has changed, you know, their their business or their careers. So uh, one one client that comes to mind works. Uh, she owns an advertising agency uh, that specializes helping e-commerce businesses with their with their uh, paid marketing. And mm -hmm. after her first book came out, she had uh, triple the lead flow within a month um, of people wow. coming in and saying, "Hey, we're ready to work with you. We don't need to go through your whole sales funnel. Like, can we start now?" Um, and so that was a major uptick in her business. And she actually came back about 18 months later and said, can we do another one? Um, <laughs> so she, she partnered with another person in her industry. And so they released a book together and then focused on a slightly different market, but both of them have seen significant increases in their businesses again, since, since that book came out. Um, there are most of the people I work with are pretty well established. And so they do have those high ticket items. Um, mm -hmm. they've got pretty solid processes in place. They can handle an influx of leads, but most people are seeing a three to five increase in their, uh, lead flow within about three months of, of their books coming out. And then you have your own book, right? How to write this book, which is interesting. Um, and, uh, and tell me what, what made you decide to write that book, given that you ghost write for other people? I mean, why did you write a book telling people how to write books? <laughs> I just think that I'm very much a fan of the democratization of information. Mm -hmm. um, I think mm -hmm. the more information everybody has access to, the better. Um, the, I, it was the second book I have written mm -hmm. for my own business. Uh, the first one was about content marketing. Um, mm -hmm. And it really is a way for me to demonstrate that I know what I'm talking about, to prove right. my model and to... Um, you know, to show other people that it's possible because not everybody is going to want to work with a ghostwriter. Not everyone can afford it. It doesn't sure. feel right for everybody. And so I don't think that should be a limiting factor on whether somebody is able to share their expertise. Just because somebody mm. hasn't figured out how to make massive amounts of revenue doesn't mean that they don't have valuable information. And so if they were in a position to teach something important, then I want to empower them to do that. So that book is very much a how-to guide. It's it's all in there. The whole process is in yeah. there. So, um, yeah, it's all. Uh, I, I I don't like keeping information hidden away. So. Yeah. And, and just coming back to that, um, I mean, don't need to get into numbers, but I mean, some people would presume that hiring a ghostwriter is an extremely expensive uh, process and a huge investment. Um, what's the reality? It really depends on the experience of the ghostwriter, obviously, mm -hmm. as it usually is. At the low end, for somebody who's just starting out and maybe doesn't really have any experience, you could expect to pay ten to $15,000 for a project. If you're working with a Pulitzer Prize winner journalist who's written every celebrity's mm -hmm. you know, memoir for the last 20 years, then probably you're looking more at the eighty to 100000 range. And I, I'm pretty squarely in, in the middle of that range. Um, I'm not interested in trying to write, you know, Elton John's biography, but, right. <laughs> um, you know, the, there are plenty of people out there doing it. You've just got to dig a little bit to find them. Yeah. As interesting as that might be in its own way, yeah. but anyway. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I just like yeah. low drama, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there, there you go. Um, so if somebody, if somebody is considering this for their business right now, how, what, what would you say to them, uh, like a process that they could just go through themselves before reaching out to someone like you to make sure that this is exactly the right thing for them? So the first thing to think about is whether your business can handle an uptick in lead flow like that, just because, uh, it's great to scale your business, but inefficiency tends to scale in lockstep with that. Sure. So you want to make sure you've got your processes really dialed in and you can handle, um, you know, significant extra attention just because you don't want to squander all of the effort and the goodwill that has been generated by putting this book mm -hmm. together. You want customers to continue having a really great experience with you. So assuming you've got that foundation in place, then think about what you want the book to do for your business. Where is it going to fit into the marketing ecosystem? that you have already, uh, how can you fit it into the marketing that you're already really good at? You know, launching a book is very much like launching any other product or service. And so if you've got something you're really great at already, then just replicate that with your book. Um, mm -hmm. Think about that strategic intent. You know, what's the guiding principle of this book? What do readers need to take away from it? That really big idea that you can filter your information through. And then think about whether you can find 10 to 15 big ideas that could form the basis of chapters 
and you know think realistically if you could verbally talk about that each of those ideas for 15 or 20 minutes half an hour if you can talk that much about each of those things probably you'll find yourself with enough information to form the basis of a chapter yeah, no, no, that's that's really excellent advice. Uh, and I, and then I think also maybe look at, you know, is this right for your? Is, as you said, is this right for your business? Is this actually going to help your business? Uh, right. uh, and and are I mean I guess the other part is, and are you prepared to see the process through? Yes, it takes a, it takes some time. It's it's still surprisingly complicated for having mm-hmm. been in action, you know, for such a long time. Self publishing can still be a pretty messy process. It never quite goes exactly the same way mm-hmm. <laughs> across each project. So you've got to be willing to do a little bit of trial and error um, and be a bit patient with it, but it's definitely worth it. I think it's, um, it's great to, you know, the control you get over the project mm-hmm. with self-publishing is just fantastic. So I'm very much. Um, and what would you say to, what would you say to people who say, well, in this era of, uh, do people really read books? You know, they're all watching YouTube videos. They listen to podcasts. I mean, do people really still read books? What do you say to them? Yeah. I mean, I think books have been around for 600 years, right? And, mm-hmm. and they've persisted through everything that we've ever experienced as a modern society. And there's, as much book sales, as many book sales going on today in as many different formats as there have ever been. You know, yes, we consume them across multiple different platforms now across multiple different formats, but cumulatively the the consumption of information is just massive, massive. And so I don't think there's, I have no fear of this Mm -hmm. role ever going away or of books themselves ever going away. And it's an interesting, I read something recently where there's an interesting phenomenon in, in younger people actually returning to reading books in their, you know, hard copy, in hard copy books. Uh, and you would have thought that, oh, they'd be opposite, that they just consume everything digitally, but they're kind of coming back towards it. I mean, I guess probably in the way that some people gravitate back towards vinyl and all that kind of stuff. But have you seen that? Definitely. It's, I think it's a different reading experience um, Mm -hmm. to get sort of into the weeds with it. You know, you have all of your senses are engaged differently when you're reading Mm -hmm. digitally versus when you're reading physically. So when you read physically, you have a sense of where you are in the book. You get, your brain gets an additional layer of information by being able to see contextually where this information is. So I think a lot about information hierarchy. So what does the reader need to understand in order to continue progressing through your story? And if you can see physically in the book where this information falls, you can kind of get a sense of how important it is or you know how it's going to impact what you read down the line. Um, you're also going to be more likely to remember where in the book something specific happened because you could see it. Um, so there's, there's a, a lot of um, physiology that is, mm-hmm. is different in how you read across different formats. Yeah, it's interesting. And then we always have, like, if you have that book near you, it's always sort of sitting there going, are you going to finish me? Seriously? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're always there, right? In someone's house with them. It's, it's a very easy way to become unforgettable. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, this has been fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for, for talking to us. Um, all of, all of the, um, all of the information, uh, contact information be in the contributor bio, but please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So I help people ghostwrite and edit their books. Uh, I take them all the way from idea to published and on sale. Um, that process usually takes about six months. People can learn a bit more about that process and about me on my website, which is lauraiswriting.com. You can also download a free copy of how to write this book there. Just pop your email into the little pop-up that shows on the site and I'll email it right over to you. Yeah, so Laura Gale, ghostwriter. Um, Laura is writing is the website. I mean, I would encourage people. I think it's a great process. I've been lucky enough to have a couple of books published myself. I think it's a... Uh, I think it's something that uh, is well worth the investment and time and something that you'll never regret, put it that way. Absolutely. You might, you might totally enjoy the process at times, but you'll never regret it. But then again, nothing in life when you do it, nobody enjoys the, the process of anything fully. It's the results that they, that they look back on with pride, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.